Hello, how are you? Glad that you are with me today for daily prayer. This is for Friday, October 30th, 2020. Hope you made it through the storm okay and that this is a uh, moment of comfort for you. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. We pray to you, O Lord, you hear us in the morning. At sunrise, we offer our prayer and wait for your answer. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O Lord our God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you have poured out your grace upon us and claimed us as your beloved people. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to love and serve you always, and to love and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings, nope, that's the wrong one. Our reading is 1 Kings chapter 21 through 22. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Later that following, the following events took place. Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel beside the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. And Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard so that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near my house. I will give you a better vineyard for it, or if it seems good to you, I will give you its value in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral inheritance. Ahab went home resentful and sullen because of what Naboth the Jezreelite had said to him, for he had said, I will not give you my ancestral inheritance. He lay down in his bed, turned away his face, and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said, Why are you so depressed that you will not eat? He said to her, Because I have spoken to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard for it. But he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, do you, now go- do you now govern Israel? Get up, eat some food, and be cheerful. I will give you a vineyard, the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters to Ahab's, in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. She sent the letter to the elders and the nobles who lived with Naboth in his city. She wrote in the letter, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth at the head of the assembly. Seat two scoundrels opposite him and have them bring a charge against him, saying, You have cursed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. The men of his city, the elders and the nobles who lived in his city, did as Jezebel had sent word to them, just as it was written in the letters that she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth at the head of the assembly. The two scoundrels came in and sat opposite him. And the scoundrels brought a charge against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth cursed God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned. He is dead. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Go, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. As soon as Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab set out to go to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in the vineyard of Naboth where he has gone to take possession. You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Have you killed and also taken possession? You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, dogs will also lick up your blood. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O my enemy? He answered, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord. I will bring disaster on you, I will consume you, and will cut off from Ahab every male, bond or free in Israel, and I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam son of Nabat, and like the house of Baasha son of Ahijah, because you have provoked me to anger and have caused Israel to sin. Also concerning Jezebel, the Lord said, The dog shall eat Jezebel within the bounds of Jezreel. 
Anyone belonging to Ahab who dies in the city, the dog shall eat, and anyone of his, of his who dies in the open country, the birds of the air shall eat. Indeed, there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord, urged by his wife Jezebel. He acted most abominably in going after idols, as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. When Ahab heard the, those words, he tore his clothes and put sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, lay in the sackcloth, and went about dejectedly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days. But in his son's days, I will bring the disaster on his house. For th three years, Aram and Israel continued without war. But in the third year, King Jehoshaphat of Judah came down to the king of Israel. The king of Israel said to his servants, Do you know that Ramoth Gilead belongs to us? Yet we are doing nothing to take it out of the hands of the king of Ar Aram. He said to Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to battle at Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people are your people, my horses are your horses. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, Inquire first for the Lord, for the word of the Lord. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred of them, and said to them, Shall I go to battle against Reb Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? They said, Go up, for the Lord will give it into your hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, is there no other prophet of the Lord here of whom we may inquire? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one other by whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micaiah son of Imlah, but I hate him, for he never prophesies anything favorable about me, but only disaster. Jehoshaphat said, Let the king not say such a thing. Then the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, Bring quickly Micaiah son of Imlah. Now the king of Israel and king Jehoshaphat of Judah were sitting on their thrones, arrayed in their robes, at the threshing floor in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them, Zedekiah, son of Canana, made for himself horns of iron. And he said, Thus says the Lord, With these you shall gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the prophets were prophesying the same and saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, the words of the prophets uh, with one accord are favorable to the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whoever the Lord says, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. When he had come to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, oh, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we refrain? He answered him, Go up and triumph. The Lord will give it into your hand, into the hand of the king. But the king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep that have no shepherd, and the Lord said, These have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy anything favorable about, about me, but only disaster? Then Micaiah said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the host of heaven standing beside him to the right and to the left of him. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab so that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Then one said one thing and another said another, until a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord, saying, I will entice him. How? the Lord asked him. He replied, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then the Lord said, You are to entice him, and you shall succeed. Go out and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these your prophets. The Lord has dec decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Kehniah, came up to Micaiah, slapped him on the cheek, and said, Which way did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? Micaiah replied, 
you will find out on the day when you go in to hide in an inner chamber. The king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and Joash the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, put this fellow in prison, and feed him on reduced rations of bread and water until I come in peace. Micaiah said, If you return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Hear you people, all of you. So the king of Israel and king Jehoshaphat of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you wear your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had commanded the uh, 32 captains of his chariots, Fight with no one small or great, but only with the king of Israel. When the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, It is surely the king of Israel. So they turned to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out. When the captains of the chariot saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. But a certain man drew his bow and unknowingly struck the king of Israel between the scale armor and the breastplate so that he said to the driver of his chariots, Turn around and carry me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle grew hot that day, and the king was propped up on his chariot facing the Arameans until at evening he died. The blood from the wound had flowed into the bottom of the chariot. Then about sunset a shout went through the army, Every man to his city and every man to his country. So the king died, and he was brought to Samaria. They buried the king in Samaria. They washed the chariot by the pool of Samaria. The dogs licked up his blood, and the prostitutes washed themselves in it according to the word of the Lord that he had spoken. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did and the ivory house that he built and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the annals of the king of Israel? So Ahab slept with his ancestors, and his son Ahaziah succeeded him. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, began to reign over Judah on the fourth year of King Ahab of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azubah, daughter of Shili. He walked all the way of his father Asa. He did not turn aside from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. Yet the high places were not taken away, and the peoples still sacrificed and offered incense on the high places. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his power and all that he showed and how he waged war, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? The remnant of the male temple prostitutes who were still in the land from the days of his father Asa, he exterminated. There was no king in Edom. A deputy was king. Jehoshaphat made ships of the Tarshish type to go to Ophir for gold, but they did not go, for the ships were wrecked at Ezion-Geber. And then Isaiah, son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, Let my servant go with your servant in the ships. But Jehoshaphat was not willing. Jehoshaphat slept with his ancestors and was buried with his ancestors in the city of his father David. His son, Jehoram, succeeded him. Ahaziah, son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria in the seventeenth year of King Jehoshaphat of Judah. He reigned for two years over Israel. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and mother and in the way of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin. He served Baal and worshipped him. He provoked the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger, just as his father had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, we have the the end of King Ahab. Um, He is, again, continues to be arrogant, um, and um, he goes and, and... tries to take this vineyard that neighbors his palace from somebody, and this person, um, uh, Naboth, does not want to give up that land. And so Jezebel conspires against Naboth and has him killed wrongfully so that the king can just take his land. Um, he does it, right? There's, this is absolutely, it's, you know, em, eminent domain. It's just taking the best land for, uh, for the king and not giving it to, to just the regular people who own it. Um, there's a lot of stuff there. Part of, partly it's a, um, 
uh, fulfillment or or we ha- would have seen this all when Samuel made that speech about all the things that the king is going to do. One of those things is he's going to take all the best land for himself. Well, he does it, um, and he takes that over. Um, Elijah confronts him about it and says that, that this is not going to go well for him um, and pronounces this sentence against Ahab that the dogs are going to lick up the blood, uh, his blood, and that he's going to be defeated. Um, then we have this campaign from uh, of Judah and Israel, so the two nations of of the Hebrew people, the northern and the southern tribes. They're coming together. They're going to attack Aram, and the king of Judah, who is more righteous, wants to kind of like see and make sure that everything's going to be okay. And all the prophets are saying, "Yes, go ahead, go up and and do battle against them." He says, "Is there somebody else?" And Ahab says, well, there's this one guy, um, I don't remember the name of the prophet, but every time he says something, it's not something that's good about me. He is, it's, it's fake news, it's all this sort of stuff, right? It's, it's not stuff that I want to hear. Um, well, they go and call on this guy, and he at first says, yeah, go ahead and, and join in the battle because it's going to be a good thing. Um, but then after that, gives this vision of God's courtroom where this lying spirit comes before God and because God wants to defeat Ahab. Um, and this lying spirit says, I'm going to go and fool him by speaking my false words in the words of the prophets so that Ahab will go out. Um, and basically this plan is spoiled because, not because of anything that Ahab does, because he didn't want to listen to this guy, um, but because of the righteousness of the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, who says, isn't there someone else that we should hear? Um, well, they do in fact, join in the battle, and there's this attempt at um, at subterfuge. They um, um, Ahab does not wear his normal robes. He actually put those on puts those on Jehoshaphat, and he just dress, dresses up like a normal person. Well, the Aramean army is instructed. All the generals are instructed just to go after the king of of Israel, Ahab. That's all they care about. And so they go and try to pursue Jehoshaphat and find that he's not actually the one that they're looking for. And so then they're trying to look for him. Well, meanwhile, there is just completely randomly some soldier lets loose an arrow and it lands just right so that it kills Ahab. Not as an intentional thing, but very much as a divine thing. And so Ahab dies there on the battlefield. Um, Actually, they drag him off and he kind of watches the defeat of his people and he bleeds out and they bring it back and the dogs lick up the blood. It's pretty gross, but there's the end of Ahab. Um, So then we have a a few sort of words about King Ahab and his predecessor and also Jehoshaphat and all the things that they did. And we see just sort of the general idea of uh, of what's going on here. The king of Israel is terrible, um, just like his fathers and the fathers before him, and his son, um, I don't remember his name, um, is just as bad as he was. And he does all the bad things, just like Ahab and Jezebel had done, um, worshiping the Baals, worshiping all these other foreign armies, just not doing what he's supposed to be doing. Um, The king of Judah, the southern country, is righteous, mostly. Um, Didn't actually take down these foreign worship places, but was righteous, held up the word of God, um, did some work with, there were some some temple prostitutes that he eliminated, um, those sorts of things. And and then we also have reference to these these separate books, the the annals of the kings of Israel and the annals of the kings of Judah. Isn't it written in these all the things that they did? We have no access to this book. It is lost to time. Um, either of these books, the book of there was a reference to the the annals of the book of Solomon before as well. We don't have these anymore. This is just lost to history. 
Uh, we don't know all of those extra details and all of those things that these other people did. We just have uh, what is presented in 1 Kings and also in Chronicles. So those are our readings for today, and that kind of finishes up our reading for this week. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life which we have received by your grace and the new life you give in Jesus Christ. Especially, we thank you for ministries of compassion, witness, and service. Those who make and grow the things we need. the communities in which we live. Strength and abilities to serve you today. Indications of your love at work in the world. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for our stewardship campaign and all that God is doing in and through that. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others and commit ourselves to serve them even as you have served us in Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Africa. The conservation of the soil, water, and air. Those closest to us in this community. Friends and relatives who are far away. All who care for others in body, mind, and spirit. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for all those who have been affected by Hurricane. Zeta, who continue to be um, out of power, who are evacuated, all of those things. Lift up Julie, former musician who has contracted COVID-19. We pray for Josh, a friend of mine who has contracted COVID-19, and Levi, a young son of, of mine, or a young son of a friend of mine who is sick. Not COVID-19, but sick nonetheless. God of our salvation, as the light of morning dawns, heaven and earth sing your praise. Cause us to live and grow in faith so that we may bear good fruit for the glory of your holy realm. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now may we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Hope again that you are safe and, and okay. 
and please let us know if you need anything. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, and go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Thank you. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.